If I should say I have hope, if I should have a husband tonight and should also bear sons, would you wait for them till they were grown? Would you restrain yourselves from having husbands? No, my daughters, for it grieves me very much for your sakes that the hand of the Lord has gone out against me. Then they lifted up their voices and wept again, and Orpah kissed her mother-in-law, but Ruth clung to her. And she said, Look, your sister-in-law has gone back to her people and to her gods. Return after your sister-in-law. But Ruth said, Entreat me not to leave you, or to turn back from following after you. For wherever you go, I will go, and wherever you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people, and your God my God. Where you die, I will die, and there will I be buried. The Lord do so to me, and more also, if anything, but death parts you and me. When she saw that she was determined to go with her, she stopped speaking to her. Now the two of them went until they came to Bethlehem. And it happened, when they had come to Bethlehem, that all the city was excited because of them, and the woman said, Is this Naomi? But she said to them, Do not call me Naomi, call me Mara, for the Almighty has dealt very bitterly with me. I went out full, and the Lord has brought me home again empty. Why do you call me Naomi, since the Lord has testified against me, and the Almighty has afflicted me? So Naomi returned, and Ruth the Moabitess, her daughter-in-law with her, who returned from the country of Moab. Now they came to Bethlehem at the beginning of barley harvest. Amen. May the Lord bless these words into our hearts and the Holy Spirit to give the, the necessary food to each one of us. So, they were a beautiful family. Naomi, her husband, and, and her two boys, Malcon and Kilion. And they dwelt in Bethlehem. And we know that Bethlehem it's a beautiful city and there Christ was born. As this city is a very beautiful city because here Christ was born. And Christ increases. But in this beautiful city a famine came. In the land of Judah. And many, time the wor many times the word of God tells us that famine came as it is happening in our country these days and I'm saying that the poor and the rich men are being tested the poor uh, those who have money they will open their compassion to help will they help those who don't have you know my heart hurts when I see brothers who don't have electricity that don't have the necessary things I met someone who is reading the gospel. He wants to be baptized in the gospel. And he said to me, Vai, I will commit suicide. I'm in a terrible situation. I'm saying to him, Is it possible for you who know Christ? We used to read the gospel. Who told me that you made the decision to be baptized to testify in the baptism and to the remissions of the sins, and this is the first commandment of the Lord. As the symbol of faith says that I testify in baptism and to the remission of sins, and if there is someone who hasn't test made this testimony this night, you should make this testimony. You don't know if you will be living tomorrow. Now is an acceptable time. Now is a day of salvation. You know, I have lived things that astonished me. Once there was a sister in Thessalonica who used to say that I will be baptized and I said to her, come and I will baptize you. Today, tomorrow, the next day, on Sunday. And she felt hurt, she went to the hospital and she had cancer. And she never uh, stood up from her bed. Uh, she used to tell me, 
I want to be baptized. Benda told her, how can you not be baptized? She didn't make it to be baptized, but I hope that she went in heaven. Because the last day she was asking very much for the Lord. But why you are well? Why don't you do the will of God? Which is a simple thing. Whoever believes and be baptized, he will be saved. Doesn't the word of God say so? Does the Lord tell us difficult things to do? But to some people, this seems to be a great mountain to be baptized. I, I wasn't baptized. They excuse themselves. Wasn't I baptized when I was an infant? Yes, but you didn't confess faith in Jesus Christ. But what matters is to believe and then to be baptized. But when someone dies, we take him and bury him. We, tend, we don't take a living one to, to bury. But the man first dies and then we bury him. And when the man believes, then he dies by faith. And the new man is born. I believe in Christ and Christ is born within me. And then I bury the old man. And many hesitate to be baptized. But how long can you keep a dead man at home? Keep him. I remember we had a brother who died. For two, three days he was at home. We couldn't take it from this from the bad smell. And brother Louis said he go from a pharmacy and to use something so that we could make the funeral. How long can you keep a dead man? On you because the old man dies and we bury him and the young man the new man who is in Christ Jesus he is a new man he's a new creation and then we walk in a new life my beloved brethren but now I come back to my issue Bethlehem is a beautiful city where there is the blessing of God and our Greece is a beautiful country and the Lord will bless it. Amen. But now there is famine. And this brother told me, find me one work just to gain 500 euro and every night I will be in the church. And I told him, you are lying. The devil deceives you. You have to come unemployed in the church and then you will see how Christ will bring um, bring um, things to come out. He is working. He does whatever he can. But you see how the devil deceives him. No, you don't have this thing and that's why you don't go to the church. You don't have the other thing. If you had this thing, then you would go to the church every night. If I would gain 1,000 euro, I would be every night in the church. If I have a, a store, I would be every night in the church. And it was proved that as many as they walked in this wall, way, that they didn't keep nothing. This is a lie. Can you be unemployed and to come every night to the church? Can you be ill and to be here every night? As this woman who was leaning she didn't know that at some point she would receive the blessing of the Lord for 18 years she was going to the synagogue but this that night that beautiful night Christ was in the synagogue do we believe that Christ is in this gathering and he has to give to you also and to you my sister and everything is possible to him who believes but you know the Lord wants us to follow him without any conditions. I was 21 years old and I said I will sign a contract and you will give me the power and I will follow you. And this was back 40 years ago. Did the Lord leave me? Abandon me? No. He didn't leave me. I can declare this thing this night since we see you and hear you through the internet to stand at this podium and to declare that the Lord says I will not leave you neither abandon you 
Do not put conditions to the Lord. Don't say, first I have to find a job. As I said to this brother, our brother. Do not put conditions to the Lord. If the Lord will heal me, then I will come to the church. If the Lord will do this thing, then I will go to the church. But we have to worship the Lord every day, don't we, brethren? Doesn't to Him belong the, the honor, the glory, and worship? I like the words that Job says. Even if He puts me to death, I will hope in Him. It's not like his wife who says, How many bad things came upon us. Blaspheme God. We've lost our possessions. We've lost our cows, our donkeys. We've lost even our children. Blaspheme God. Why do you worship Him? Can we all this night to say, Lord, I glorify you no matter what is happening into my life. Even if I'm unemployed, I glorify you. Even if I don't have money in my pockets, I glorify you. Even if at home I don't have plenty of food, I glorify you, Lord. But you will send a bird. What does the prophet say? If there are not cows, if there are not sheep, if the fig tree doesn't blossom, I will hope to the Lord. In this beautiful, in this difficult days that our country is going through, many brethren are going through great difficulties. The heart of all of us is being tested. Will those who don't have anything stay to the church, or will they say, "Where is the Lord? Where is Christ? Why doesn't He answer to my prayer?" I'm asking Him, "Where is He?" Yes, but the Lord is by your side. Didn't Job say so? I don't see Him. I know that on the right hand he's working from behind me, from before me. He's working. He's the Lord. We don't see him, but he is the Lord. Or better, you should lay your hand and touch a garment of the Lord. You should do this, brother. This night, the Lord is calling you to say like this woman, I will touch his garment and I will receive blessing. And we all want to touch the garment of the Lord, don't we? He doesn't say that I have appointed the blessing for some. The Lord doesn't discriminate. And I like what Peter says when he was in the house of Cornelius. I know that the Lord does not look with partiality. He doesn't see in men's faces. He doesn't make discriminations. He doesn't bless other, and he doesn't... He, it's not that he blesses others and he doesn't bless others. He blesses all. We just have to open our heart and draw close to him. Yes, but the devil comes at many times you've asked, but he didn't give you. And this woman used to go to the synagogue. He, she used to go for one year, five years, ten years, fifteen years, for eighteen years. Are you waiting for the Lord for eighteen years? And this paralyzed man he was waiting for 18 years I like these people that they were waiting for the blessing of God Naomi with her husband Elimelech and her two children they didn't say okay there is a famine but God won't abandon us again the Lord will send rain again the Lord will um, bring fruition and there is the the famine and there's the spiritual famine when the Lord doesn't act we don't when we don't see the hand of God he's testing us will you continue to pray will you continue to go to the church will you say I know that my Redeemer leaves or will you say what he tells you he who deceives you I was waiting for something but nothing happened and many people said, put uh, conditions to the Lord, but blessed is he who gives himself without conditions to the Lord. Blessed is he who says, Lord, take my life into your hand. Take everything into your hands, Lord. And let not my will be done by, but yours. Can you say this 
thing this night that I don't put any condition to you Lord and if you even if you give me to drink some bitter cups please take this cup away from me but not as I will my father when I read brethren that the Son of God, the perfect man, the one without sin, that was without deceit, the righteous, the Holy One, as the Apostle Paul says, think about Him who endured so many things, so that you may not grow weary, Think about what the Lord went through. He didn't have a house. He didn't have money. He didn't have a family. He didn't make a family. He was a brave young man who started his ministry when he was 33 years old. He entered persecutions from the Sadducees, from the Pharisees, from the lawmakers, from the scribes, from everywhere. They were against him. But he stood on his feet and the Lord defeated them. I have overcome, he said, and you will overcome. Brother, Christ will give you the victory. Sister, do not lose your courage. I like the prayer that the brother made to give us courage and faith. This time we need courage and faith, don't we? The brethren who have lost their jobs, they need to receive courage and faith. The brethren... And as I, who made houses and received loans, and now what will happen with the loans? We lost the earth under our feet. We had an income, and we said we will give 500 euro, 600 euro, and then with the rest I will leave, and I, we will have our house, because we love houses here in Greece. We make the gardens so that the brethren may come and all together may worship God. But as you see what no one was waiting has happened. The salary is increased. The salary is decreased. And many will have debts at the banks. So we Christians have to make a good account Unfortunately, many Christians don't do this. And they do far more things than, the, than they can take it. And then the church doesn't help. Do you know how many brethren have come to me and said, I need so much money. And I said that the church is not for your debts. The church is for your um, plate of food. If you don't have them, the church and we all owe to the brothers and sisters who don't have food to buy them shoes to buy them food yes this is the mission of the church you didn't make the right account and you have depth with cards and now you say that the church doesn't have love no the church doesn't have love the church doesn't give me 5,000 euro to pay my checks my debts this is not the goal for the church brethren yes we talk boldly many brothers have come to me and I want to say something else we don't run after the politicians unfortunately I hear, I hear many brothers and said I want to go with this party and I say to him I'm with Christ and Christ has taught me because at some time at the beginning of my faith I liked a political party but the Lord came and taught me so my daughter took this flag and I was ashamed and I say take it down we are Christians and the Holy Spirit came and told me did you see how much you was offended you don't want your daughter to lift up this banner but we lift up the banner of Christ brethren we don't run after the politicians and political parties and the brother prayed and all of us we are praying so that God may enlighten them so that God may help our country 
because the days are bad and the days are evil and these are difficult times brethren and now we are all tested all the churches are tested all the hearts are tested the rich and the poor are tested and do you remember what Paul said what Moses did when God used to give the manna there were some who ran and they filled more baskets but we shouldn't lack and Moses told them come here and he took the measure and he said you should each one have for one basket you have three give the two and you have gathered four give the three and you who have gathered little and we who labored so much this is the righteousness of God having foods and coverings is to be sufficient to these things we don't see as this modern theory says yes God is rich we have to become rich also you are deceived my brother will we be rich in the world our kingdom our palaces in heaven uh, Paul says this people that have in their mind the earth to think but our citizenship the absolute the Philippians says that it's in heaven we're waiting for the Lord uh, Jesus Christ amen brethren are we waiting for the Savior this night my father is 89 90 years old and every day I tell him father tonight this day Christ is coming and he tells me don't fool make fool of me and I t say to him today Christ is coming are we waiting for him brethren the real Christian is the one who every day is waiting for Christ we have nothing else in this world my beloved brethren our portion is Jesus Christ our citizenship is in heaven he, he has prepared for us a beautiful house in heaven do you believe this we shouldn't be waiting to make country houses if God permits so without getting in trouble because as you remember and the last time where the Lord speaks he says that take heed lest your heart be burdened from drunkenness but he adds also from the cares of this life and it's true that many Christians in our days they get in trouble with the cares of this life and he tells me I don't have time to come to the church anymore I don't have time to pray I don't have time to study the word why my brother did you get involved so much with his cares the most beautiful days in my life I remember that I had them when being young I w used to work very hard we had a, a, a shop but we said with our brothers that we would work till four o'clock and then in the evening at night we would give it to the Lord we would dedicate it do you know how much the Lord blessed us and every night we were in the church and do you know when heaven opened we have what you have and it's a beautiful thing one hour pray before the sermon then the sermon and uh, after the sermon one hour prayer we used to sit till 10 10 10 30 and I remember that God had baptized more than 100 with the Holy Spirit small children were baptized with the Holy Spirit old people were baptized with the Holy Spirit and new brothers and sisters we don't say things and words which we haven't lived but we're talking about the things that we have lived and the Lord hasn't changed Christ is the same yesterday the decade of 80 that many churches were opened throughout the whole church and the Lord witnessed with power and the Lord today wants to fill up the stadium he wants to take the church out why should people 8,000 people to go to a football match and not to have a gathering there is football 
more worth than Christ? Who has more worth? The football or Christ? It's Christ. Christ will be glorified in our country. With all the problems and the difficulties that you have, will you continue to love the Lord? Many say that I love the Lord. I don't see you that you love Him. If you come to the church as a custom, if you're not an involved member in the church, if you're not striving in prayer, if you're not striving along with the church, then how do you say that you love Christ? This is a lie. We love Christ today when we are involved with the church. And when I'm saying this, I mean that you should offer. No one is useless. And may I say to you in a different way, do you want to cut a little finger from your hand? Do you want to cut a little finger from your feet? Do you want to cut a part from your body? No, isn't it so? I don't want. I don't change with anything else the parts of my body. I want them, all of them. I want my body to be complete. And Christ was all of us. He loves us. But He wants you to be an involved member. He wants you to offer. He wants you to strive. He wants you to to do the actions that Christ wants from you. Of course, He didn't give to all of us the same work. Not all of them can be apostles, can prophet, can um, preach, can make miracles. But, but each member, as you see, has a work in the body. And every brother has a work in the church. So, if my brother and sister, you don't offer to the work that Christ wants you to offer, then the Holy Spirit wants to wake you up this night. You should offer to Him. You should offer this work. And many people make this mistake that this family made. It's not good anymore in Bethlehem. We have so many problems. There is a famine. There are difficulties. They make fun of us. They make fun of us, people. The old the Moabites are having a good time. And as Asaf says in the psalm, I used to see that they were going well while I was fasting, striving. I was going to the church. Did I cleanse my heart in vain? Everything is going well for them. And he says that I couldn't understand this. But then he went to prayer and said, Lord, Lord, please show me. Give me to understand. Why am I tortured and the rest, the unbelievers, those who do not believe in God and live in sin? They have successes in their lives and they are going well. And then the Lord comes and shows him. And he says, I was a beast before you. I couldn't understand, Lord. But I, to be attached in you, this is my gain, Lord. And then he understood. And may the Lord enlighten you the, this night. May the, he enlighten all of us to understand that our gain is to be attached in Christ. And if there is famine, brother, if I don't have what is necessary to leave, if I don't have a job, if I'm going through many difficulties, wait in Bethlehem for the Lord. He, the God, God will visit Bethlehem. God will visit His church. And you know, all those who have left the church, I've sent them to go back again and smoking cigarettes, and drinking, to go back again and sing. And how much doesn't my heart hurt when I meet them out? And I said to them, Brother, how are you like that? How did the devil made you? Didn't you prophesy in the church? Didn't you preach? Didn't you lift up your hands and you were shouting that the, uh, the, the Redeemer leaves? Why do you turn back to this vomits of the world? 
What are the results that you have? And do you know what is the answer? I want to come back, my brother, but I can. And do you know what did I think? Oh Lord, enlighten me so that I should never insult your blood. You haven't been bought with gold and silver. Who brought us here, brethren? Who has delivered us? But the precious blood of Jesus Christ. The holy blood of Jesus Christ. The crucifixion of the Lord. He has delivered you, my brother. He has delivered you, my sister. He has cleansed you. He has broken the bonds and the chains of the devil. And as Isaiah says, Remember from where the Lord brought you out. But the cunning devil, he has the ability to make man forget. And many say, what has God done for man? He forgets everything. Hasn't Christ healed you? Didn't, he cry, didn't Christ deliver you? Didn't you used to smoke three packets per day and he has delivered you? Did you deliver yourself? Didn't, didn't you use drugs? Didn't you live in fornication? And didn't he deliver you? Whomever Christ delivers, he is free. The precious blood of Jesus Christ. Are you envying the land of Moab? Are you envying the land of Moab? Are you envied of the world, sister? Are you envied of the world? Pray so that the Lord may show you, so that the Lord may reveal to you. As he enlightened Asaph, so that you may be attached to the Lord and not be allured with these things. Because today the devil does not fight the church as in the first apostolic church with Herod, with knives, with the with lions, and with the fire. But today the devil allures us with sin, with the plates of the world, with the desires of this world. And as the Lord mentions where he talks about the fields, the deception of riches, the desires of this world, allure and chalk the word of God and becomes unfruitful. And that the Christian man and woman abandons the place that the Lord has given and abandons Bethlehem and goes to the land of Moab and there is death. Do you remember what did the Lord say about the world that they live in death? But the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God and those who hear shall live. And he's not talking about those who are in the graves and he mentions this later down but he's talking about the dead people who are in the world who don't have Christ who don't have the gospel Hasn't the word been revealed to them which is spirit and life? But to you, the word has been revealed to you. Christ has been revealed to you. Now keep Christ into your heart. Do not abandon Bethlehem. This is the message that I want to tell you this night. This, and I want to tell you to read something more, brethren. After these difficulties that we are going through, And, and the churches are so many ill people. And we say, why doesn't the Lord heal them? Why doesn't the Lord act with power? Because we have experienced many blessings from the Lord. But the younger, they're in a situation that are saying, where is the Lord? Especially the young, the youngers, they need a lot of support. The young boys and the young Girls, my beloved young man, I have a message for you this night. 
Do not be allured from the world. Not be overtaken from the world. Sign a contract with Christ and say, Lord, I will walk with you. And the Lord will bless you. And all of the family died and only Naomi was left. And she turned back to Bethlehem Then the Lord blessed her. And from this seed Christ was born. But it says in Joel the prophet. And we'd like to close with that. Do not be afraid, this, because the Lord will do wonderful things. The Lord will make wonderful things in our country. Greece, Christ will exalt Greece, because He made this decision. Because we cry out to Him, and we call on Him, come to our country, Lord. And this work that the Lord has done, He won't live it. Do not be afraid, beasts of the plain, because the tree shall pink its fruit though in the first chapter it says that everything was destroyed and we see difficult situations and he came to you the first rain and it will rain as before again the Lord will rain are we waiting for the rain of the Lord But when will it come, brother? Suddenly the Lord will come. One night that you won't be expecting it. We will see the glory of the Lord. And the ill people will all be healed. Because the last church will be more glorious than the first. And what the Bible says, that everyone was healed, the Lord will do this again so that he may be glorified. Many people say that he did it because it was the beginning of the church. Yes, but now we are living the church of the rapture and the Lord has to do this so that we may receive power and be prepared so that we may be ready because not two raptures will take place. One, and we have to be ready, brethren. Only those who are ready will be received in heaven to meet the Lord the Lord won't say, forgive me, many stayed out of it, we will make a rapture again. Will he say so? No, he won't say so. So we shouldn't play with our soul. The trumpet will sound. A voice of an archangel and trumpet of God. The commandment of the Father and the Son will come. And the heavens and the Holy Spirit will take those who will be ready. A glimpse of an eye and then we will meet the Lord in heaven and we will be always with the Lord my beloved brethren the Lord won't make a rapture again and many say that they will go to the church but they won't find the church in here yes but people will come we Lord you have taught in the, in the squares we have eaten before you Yes, they used to come to the church. They used to hear the word of God. But they never left sin. You who work iniquity, go away. We are all Christians, as many as we are here. And I am very glad that I see you. Usually in the country, um, the churches are small with 20 or 30 people. But as I told you, we have experienced this miracle in Thessalonica that the church was a church, a, a big church. Brother George has come, he knows, and we used to be 500 people that gathered there. And it's nice when the church is full. We all sing hymns together and praise the Lord. And the glorification and our praise go up in heaven and the Father and the Son comes down from His throne. 
and he blesses my beloved brethren we thank the Lord the threshing floor shall be full of wheat and the vat shall overflow with new wine and oil but there is so great poverty brother will all these things happen will be again filled with oil with the Holy Spirit will again be full of wheat the word to have the Word of God richly and will be preached in the power of the Holy Spirit and the Lord will witness and the miracles of the Lord will happen in the Church of Christ yes they are happening but in a and I know that many brothers are disappointed. They say, will I again go before the altar? And I tell them, yes. He got disappointed. He went once, twice, three times, for one year, for five years, for ten years. But you have to come here before the altar. You will pour out your heart before the Lord. As Anna, did you come drunk to pray? Said Eli, no, my Lord what nice conduct my heart is bittered and I poured my heart my soul before the Lord she had a petition before God and she was pleading him and the Lord gave her her petition he gave her Samuel he gave her even more children more children and the Lord will answer to your prayer the Lord will answer to your petition also because God is good Blessed be the name of the Lord. He will fool the stores. And I will restore to you the years that the swarming locusts has eaten, the crawling locusts, the consuming locusts, and the chewing locusts, my great army which has sent among you. As you see, God permits everything to come. God permits them. And it's not that the Lord sends the evil, but He takes away His grace. And many evil things happen and take place on this earth that we live. And he permits very difficult situations to come. And here nothing was left, neither wheat nor oil. Nothing was left. It says that the swarming locust has eaten the crawling locust, the consuming locust, and the chewing locust. But the Lord says, I will fill up against the stores and you shall eat and you shall be filled and praise the name of the Lord your God who has dealt wondrously with you and my people shall never be put to shame Then you shall know if someone of us is desperate if you're disappointed if you suffer from an illness if your problem it's for many years and you say that the Lord doesn't answer the Lord speaks to you this night and says you should have patience my son you should be waiting on Bethlehem don't go to the land of Moab because there is death there is distraction in the world there is nothing good away from Christ but God the Lord will visit Bethlehem the Lord will visit his church and again he will bring the blessing again he will give the wheat he will give the oil and you shall know that I am in the midst of Israel I am the Lord your God and there is no other my people should never be put to shame and it says that I will pour out my spirit and he has poured out his spirit and even to my servants and my maid servants in those days I shall pour out from my spirit on every flesh and young men will prophesy the elders will see dreams and wondrous and great things will happen brethren we are living the last days Christ is coming do not play with your soul not play with your salvation do not come in and go out but stay there in your seat seeking the Lord being an involved and active member in your church do not envy the world you will gain nothing in the world that's what the Lord had told me and I said what will I gain in the world
because my friends used to tell me that you will lose everything. You will be destroyed. Many of them don't live this day. Many of them died from drugs, from illnesses. But I thank God that this night I'm with you and we testify Jesus Christ, Him crucified, resurrected, alive, true. And this night, may the Lord make miracles. May the Lord assure that these words are not mine, but that are, that are His. And Christ calls all of us, brethren, to make one step. Because He says, draw close to me. How many times we call upon Him? And He tells us, draw close to me, my son, my daughter. Come even closer to me. Don't say, oh, He doesn't baptize me with the Holy Spirit. He doesn't heal me. He doesn't give me blessings. Don't say such words. These are not true. But say that, Lord, you will bless me. That you have a portion for me, Lord. That you have a Holy Spirit with me. You have gifts for me, Lord. And I want to be a living member in the church. To work. And I testify to you that the greatest joy that I receive is when I work for the Lord. Testify the Lord to your colleagues and you will see what joy you will receive. The Holy Spirit gives such joy. When we testify the Lord, when we give the gospel, because this is His commandment, give my word, give the gospel, go everywhere, go to the villages. People don't know. They live in darkness. They don't know that the gospel is the word of God, that it's a living book, that the blessing comes through the word in our soul, in our families, in our relatives, because it says, believe and you and your household will be saved. All your relatives will be saved. God has a nice plan for you, the Lord. He has a nice plan for you, my sister. You just speak with faith, with courage, boldly. Let not the devil deceive you. And you say that the Lord doesn't have a blessing for me. But start seeking the Lord. Come here before the altar to bow, to kneel. Come as much as you can to the church. Give more time, as much time as you can to the church. And cry out and seek the Lord. And the Lord is good. The Lord is merciful. He is compassionate. You will see and your soul will rejoice and will be glad and the Lord will make wonderful things to you and to the whole church. Amen. And pray for us, brethren. We need your prayers. And may we all be ready so that no one may be left out. Isn't what the Lord wants from the small smallest no one should stay away from the kingdom of God. All of a sudden we will hear the trumpet and we will be taken, brethren. The Holy Spirit will take us. If you smoke, He won't take you. If you swear, He won't take you. If you commit fornication, He won't take you. If you live in lie, He won't receive you. If you have love for money, you won't be taken. Why didn't you, Lord, take us? Didn't they say so open to us? We want to enter, Lord, but they didn't make the decision to abandon sin and walk with Christ. Have you made this decision? Not with half of your heart. If you are lukewarm, it says that I will vomit you. The Lord wants all of our heart. I live the world, I live sin, and with the power and your grace, Yes, I testify. And fr from my 20 years of age, of age, with your grace and your power, I will follow you. And I thank the Lord that till this day, I'm almost 16 years old, the Lord keeps me with him. And my prayer is, Lord, the rest days, I don't know how many there are, there's few years that are left, months and years. Lord, I want to stay faithful. I don't want to lose the things that I've worked for. 
but I want to see your face. I want to enjoy your kingdom because the Lord has called all of us, brethren, to enjoy His glory. Do you know how much glory is waiting for you? But this temporary sorrow, my brother and my sister, is working exceedingly. Eternal weight of glory. A human mind cannot think about the things that the Lord has prepared for those who love Him. So, don't let the world deceive you. Don't let the desires of the world deceive you. There is death. There is destruction. What fruition did you have from those works? When I remember what I did when I was away from Christ, I say, I want to break my head, Lord. Because my mind was blinded so that the light of the gospel shouldn't shine. But today may the Holy Spirit enlighten us and we will make this steadfast decision. We will make this decision with our whole heart. We will give our will to follow Jesus Christ. Amen.